reminded me of my brothers from way back when, when we used to do the Geek Tasm, and then uh, we would randomly talk about retro films going through different periods, and then things have changed and, and stuff with the Geek Tasm. So this pretty much is our reunion episode. And so before we begin, and before I introduce my brothers to the left of me, you know, uh, pretty much uh, I was told to start with a quote. To the right, so, to the right, to the right. To the left corner of the camera, but <laughs> it begins. Yeah, it, it starts. All right. <clears throat> I've never been away. I came here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum. I am Chase Johnson Lynch, the hitchhiker. And to the right, get me Rex Kramer. Hello, I'm Merv. How you doing? Fuck you. That's by uh, David Mamet. I thought you were going to say, fuck you. Was that to Mrs. Mammoth? To Mrs. Mammoth, everything he says, he goes, fuck you. Uh, Every day, Mammoth. All right, so yeah, so like I said, welcome back. You know, the original boys from the Geek Tasm decided to, you know, come together once again to talk about the films we love and the experiences that we had and shared as uh, young filmmakers are about to be on the rise or just lovers of film. Let's just call us lovers yeah. of film. Yeah? Yeah. And um, so when we were trying to figure out what should we talk about, because we felt like we talked about pretty much everything, um, um, what we suggested was <laughs> that we go back to the origin story. We go back to the beginning, you know? Because, again, we love film, and where did that love for film come from? So with that in mind, we thought we would talk about our first film experiences and then see where that takes us on the journey. You know we swim. You know we swim, <laughs> right? So because, you know, Merv wanted the boys to get back together, kind of like Eddie Murphy in Me? 48 hours. Me? Blame why, don't you, why don't you begin with uh, your uh, first film experience? My first experience, well, the first one I remember was uh, being taken to by my father to see Diamonds Are Forever on the big old movie screen in my hometown. And, I mean, I've told this story before, but... Um, my father would never take me to see anything that he wouldn't sit through. Mm. So he would never have taken me to see a Disney movie or anything like that. <clears throat> but but Sean Connery and Las Vegas and mm. Jill St. John, that appealed to him. So he thought, take this small child and see me that. And I just saw that and it just completely blew me away because it's like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Thought, wow, look at all that. Macar can do this and he's got that. And even the wig's convincing. Diamonds it's, are forever. Diamonds are forever, forever, forever. It's the songs are. You know. Can I share with you? You may share. With I you. saw Diamonds for, Are Forever in the cinema myself, uh, and I like, wonder what the noise was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but in New York, you know, we had those big cinemas. You uh, know, the ones that were like old opera houses, old yeah, performance yeah. theaters, and they had yeah. the yeah. nice, you know, like uh, tapestry and the, you know, release and the statuary. And so going to film. Yeah, 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 but this I'll was, this was, this was, um, I believe this is one of those on like um, 47th Street kind of theaters, not, I shouldn't say, not a grindhouse, but um, what it was, was Diamonds for Forever, it, it, it permeated in my memory. What I like about the retro talk that we do is because the films really affected us. Mm -hmm. It really, like, you could remember where you was. Well, I mean, in that it. same theater that I saw Diamonds of Forever, I saw Foxy Brown. I do know that mm -hmm. um, by the imagery. But also, too, is when I saw Diamonds of Forever, I remember being in the balcony. <clears throat> and, you know, the uh, this is the uh, the gold scene, of course. And then the Diamonds of Forever was when she was playing gold over that gold thing. That's a gold thing. Right. And everything like that. But I do remember it was Diamonds <laughs> Forever yeah. that I'm talking about. Yeah. And everything. And it was just like, Bond was just, it was it was huge, you know. I want to talk about other All characters right. that was huge for me then. But I do remember it. Even if I said the gold sequence, I mean, who knows, right? And everything like that. You know, there's always something <laughs> in a Bond movie. But I do remember seeing it in the cinema. And it was mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. so, so I can't really remember that far back as you. I must have been... Doing something really bad. Yeah, evidently. Yeah, I read well, that. My dad went to the cinema an awful lot and probably just didn't take me with him, mm. which is quite sad, really. Well, did nobody take you to the no, cinema as a kid? Cinema. Well, I, I remember going to the cinema to see Jaws. Mm. I remember seeing Jaws. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing so But that's 75, isn't well, it? Well, so, yeah. what was your experience seeing Jaws? Because I oh, remember seeing Jaws. I got it as I was devastated. Time. I was absolutely devastated. Did you watch time. the whole movie, do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes through that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Oh, it, 
I just, I just, it, man, when I, I'd love to have, have that experience again. Yeah, when, like when, I saw George, sorry, sorry, yeah. man, when I saw George, sorry, when I saw George, I was, my mother and her sister took me and my cousin, right, to see George. I'm like 10 years old, and I, I'm on a, I can't do it on these seats because they would break. So I, I was on the back of the seat, you mean, and like I was facing the back, you know, mm. facing my mom and sister watch this movie. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take that, dun, 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 couldn't take the noise. Every time you knew, I knew instinctually. Dun, 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 but see, dun, I have to be the, in, the, the shark seven. seven. I would have been seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from the far yeah. as well. So, yeah. so I my first to, experience I was to, not yeah. seeing. I just got with Jaws. <laughs> um, I remember like being so excited, but then that being replaced by even before the movie started with a sense of dread. Yeah. Did like. Yeah. But that said, that I, said, I, I actually was more. I watched it not that long ago yeah. again, and that opened. I mean, I to be fair though, I got in, I was affected more in terms of I really don't want to be here, oh my god, I don't like it, I don't like it, by Orca the Killer Whale. Yeah, you know, yeah, than yeah, I was yeah. Jaws, as much as I don't get me wrong, see, Jaws, saw, Jaws was, yeah. is an immortal movie, but you know, but Orca well, as a kid, I remember Orca too, yes, yeah, but your start off points must have been earlier than mine because I remember going. Yeah. I've seen stuff after 75, I saw yeah. it, so my, my parents were probably, you know, at least mm. seven now, you can probably... Yeah. 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 Did you not have any older siblings than like that? Yeah, 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 but they, they were all going to see Taxi Drive. Yeah, yeah. see, see, my mom was making my older brother take me. Yeah, so see, what my... it was, was is that, like, you know, my older brother and his friends would go into the cinema, and what they would do, because it's the 70s, they would have to hang out in front of the cinema and wait for some guy to be coming on his own. You know, can you take us in, sir? Because it was rated R meant something. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, rated R meant something. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like you couldn't go in without an adult. So we would wait for an adult to be like on his own. And you know, yeah. can you take us? Well, it's probably yeah. my position. My, my older brothers, my older sisters were probably with friends or a date or you know. Well, the same with me. I, I went mainly. I went to see Spider Man with my sister and her boyfriend. Oh, I remember that was a family joke. Was, was about eight of us that went to see that. Sad. Yeah, I remember. I'll never forget that one. In fact, actually, Spider Man um, was a bit of a turning point because that was the first movie I ever saw more than once yeah. mm-hmm. on its initial run. I mean, that's all stuff on re-releases. But its initial run, I saw that about three or four times, yeah. and I, and we went on mass to the opening day. Yeah. Because Bond was big in our house, but you know, but I saw. I mean, my went with one of my older brothers, who's like the next one up from me, because there's lots of us. Um, he was the guy I, I went to see a lot of movies with. Um, but I I was very lucky because I, I got a friend, my best friend, a guy called Paul Reese. Uh, his parents had a uh, had a free pass because they advertised mm. uh, the cinema. At their pub because they run a pub, and oh, so right. we went really to see. We went, went every week. Yeah. But yeah. then again, you know, that was also the culture. You went to you went to the movies. You didn't go to see. Oh, I want to go and see that movie. You just said, oh, let's go to the picture. See, mine was yeah. more of event movies. My dad thought, right. oh, let's go and see. Well, you. No, oh, I, no, because it was it was yeah, back yeah. then. Back then, you know, I mean, and we're really old now, I guess. Mm-hmm. But back then, you had double features, yeah. and you also had the cartoons, and they weren't just five minute cartoons. You know, mm. I remember I actually saw the Flintstones or Bugs Bunny, you know, uh, that kind of thing. While you know, while you're waiting for the mm-hmm. the movie to start, so it was an experience. Like, so when you went to the picture, especially like on a Saturday or Sunday, it was your way for your parents to get rid of you. Yeah, you know absolutely, what I mean? absolutely. And I even heard it was. The same here because like you guys had like the ABC Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon was the main stuff, yeah. was the main day for us. Yeah. I mean, for starters, in this country at the time, uh, movies opened on a Sunday, mm. and um, and so but also like you say, Sunday afternoons getting rid of us for a few hours, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, which was which was which yeah. Was fun. And so it was an experience. I mean, even before even before our time, you know, they had the serials, you know, yeah. the newsreels and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. So when you going into the cinema, and it probably was like a quarter or something like that, but when you going into the cinema. It was an all-day event, yeah. you know. So I mean, um, so see, I remember seeing staying in to see Convoy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, yeah. We went in and we were like, we missed the first ten minutes. Or mm. something. Yeah, yeah. So we watched it again. My dad said, let's just watch the first ten minutes, see what happens. Yeah. And then we just carried on and just watched it again. The whole well, yeah, well yeah. it's funny because my I, I learned that from my brother and we got quite naughty with it because mm. the one the main one we used to go to the the toilets were at the back of the screen you didn't have to come right out to the foyer to go to the toilet it's at the back of the screen and what he taught me to do was to hide so if you like the movie you want to watch it again yeah. um <coughs> i remember going to see um I, we saw uh Tower inferno twice mm. in one day and we only paid once which yeah really yeah, naughty this, this is really also, naughty you know you're talking also before the multiplex where you could sneak oh, yeah. into another theater so you only probably had like one theater that still was paying like two movies or something like that but then we you know we had other tricks like when we were old especially when we were teenagers 
like the uh, the exit went straight out to the street. No, so, well, I don't know so, why, but now on the side. It was on the side, yeah, inside the building. So what you would do, like when the lights came down for the train sign, one of us would go down and might come out slightly ajar the door, and then about eight friends would come in. Yeah, and whatnot. yeah. I thought you were gonna say what we do is like you open the doors for the exit, and then people come in while people are going. Oh out. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But most of my my early was, was TV. It was watching films on. Oh television. yeah, was, oh, that's, that's the main that's where I made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Saturday Saturday afternoon. Afternoon. Saturday, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really amazing now that we have cable and VCRs and, mm. and, and all that kind of stuff where we can watch whenever we want to watch all the time. But back then, it wasn't yeah. like well, that. We had the but last the generation TV, not to have. Yeah, not to yeah have VHS. but the TV did constantly repeat uh, movies and uh, movies also replayed in theaters often enough. Mm. You know, so even though we get like about 20 to, you know, 30 movies a month coming out, you know, there it wasn't that yeah. that many, yeah. so they would just hey bring that reel out again and play it again. But it was you know? on the TV thing, which was them when my dad used to say, my dad was a huge film buff. Um, my dad used to say, "You've got to watch this," because yeah. it was on TV. Yeah. There was stuff I'd never usually. Mm. Did you, no, I, remember I, mean, seeing, I remember seeing Golden Needles on TV right, yeah. Yeah. and everything like that, and I don't know why, because I'm pretty sure it was pretty tame, but I was scared. That, the big know, the big turning point for me was growing up in the late seventies, knowing. Almost scene by scene, uh, the entire story of End of the Dragon without ever have actually seeing it. Because my my older yeah, brother, yeah. my older brother James, oh Jimbo himself, and my father had seen that film on multiple. That's like the idea that you've got a brother called Jim Jones. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, don't, don't drink the juice. Don't drink the juice. But, um, <laughs> but cut a long story short, he, um, you know, so uh, constantly, and I'd read up on it as well. And I'm a bit fascinated in this and whatnot. I mean, you know, I'm the kid who, I'm one of those kids who would go down to the local cinema and see big ex certificate movie posters yeah. and just look at it and go, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, well, when you say ex certificate, you mean like Mark Well, do you, no, do you, 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 Oh, I remember. Uh, <laughs> Barbara, I remember like I remember like uh, staring at the poster for Dawn of the Dead. Sorry, or AKA Zombies, uh, as it was AKA known over here. Uh, big and forehead. What not stare? Well, no, not the UK poster. We just like, we had eyes. Yeah. We had oh, eyes, right, right. Or, eyes all over, 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 eyes over the city. And uh, I remember standing at my local Odeon outside there and just looking at that and then looking at things like Saturday Night Fever going like that and then looking at things like Alien and then going, oh man, I can And of course, the only, what's the only um, comfort that we had was one day, mm. one day, you'll be on TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't have to wait and wait and wait. And it wasn't and like it wasn't like they could yeah. it wasn't like they could control you watching. That was when it was really up to your parents about yeah, yeah. whether oh, yeah, yeah. you watched it. Well, my, I say my brothers would come back from things like Saturday Night Fever and something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I, I, yeah, I, I remember. Not for you, was, young man. Yeah, yeah. And and I think it also was that kind of thing. A lot of people had his family. You know, like uh, the representation of uh, the. Monero family when it was like sitting around eating and you know everybody jammed into one little shoebox of an apartment. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least where I'm from anyway. Uh, <laughs> it, was a step, it was a step up for us, believe me. All right. Um, I just, um, I just, I mean, like you say, you, picked, you mentioned that before about TV. TV really was our education. Yeah. Uh, going to the movies was one thing. That was the that was the best thing. But yeah. but the the bulk of what we did, the bulk of what we learned, the bulk of what we consumed came via the small screen. And whether it was in the UK, we were watching things like uh, the Saturday afternoon matinees, mm-hmm. or the double horror, do- the horror double bills uh, on a Saturday night, if you were very Well, good. for us... TV double bills that we used to well, get. Well, 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 for yeah. us, it was Chilla, Chilla Theatre. Mm-hmm. And it was... I'm glad Preacher- there was a name after that. I'm glad it wasn't just called Well, you know, you know, like your dead, uh, you know, like your dead hunter's poster, that was Chilla. Uh, that was yeah. Chilla, the old hand in the ground. But we also had creature features. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, you know, when you talk about Saturday or late night, that's what we had when it came to horror. Mm-hmm. You know, so did you have that kind of we had a show, we had what B- was it BBC, called? BBC Two, it, it didn't have any sort of name. It just it was a horror double bill. They would show two mm-hmm. movies back to back. They would show, they would always show a, a universal black and white mm-hmm. one around about 10 o'clock. What do you mean, like uh, Frankenstein? Frankenstein, or... yeah, one of the original, like, 1930s to 40s mm-hmm. uh, universals. And that was usually followed by either a hammer 
or uh, mm. uh, 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 one of Ro- an, one Roger, movie uh, an Abacus movie. movie or a Roger Corman movie. Yeah. Uh, essentially, you get a black and white movie first, a colour one second. Yeah. And the colour one, you, I mean, every now and then, though, they would show something, they would pull a really colour, a real gem out of the box, an AIP sort of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, I remember, see, I remember well. seeing... Um, oh, God. No I remember seeing Bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bu- oh, wait, 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 wait. My bug story. I was <laughs> 1985. I, I was in Ohio, Ohio, right? I was in Ohio because that's where I'm from. It's a No, it was just, you know, I can't bugs stand right? bugs. I mean, I grew up in New York. Can't stand roaches, right? But yeah. the movie Bug was, uh, and I was in the basement just. <laughs> Watching come on, so and why it. am I watching it? Why am I come watching on. it? Because I was, I was, I was raised on horror. Give me, give me, come horror. on, give me a geek tasm on that one. Who directed Buck? I couldn't tell you that though. See, I only was too terrified to watch it. I'm sorry, oh, I can't tell you. It's Wait, somebody it. who can walk. Cinematically, can walk on water. <laughs> who, who, who directed it? Oh, I'm, I'm giving me some. I do apologize. I'm, oh, I'm how getting could, mixed how, up with Phase how Four. Could, how could you stump the I'm getting mixed up with Phase, phase four. four. was um, Soul Bass. Soul Bass, yeah. So, my apologies, folks. Because it's bugs. Bugs all around. Because there's ants in Phase Four. I saw that as part with Double Bill as well, actually. I thought you give us a geek thousand. We no, didn't no, know it, but it's the wrong question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Insects <laughs> featured. That's the most important thing, folks. Wait, 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 wait. Before you move to TV, you didn't say what your first film was. Oh, you just said it doesn't really go. Right, okay. I think it was. It was probably it was probably a Disney film, though. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I mean, it's all right. That's why I'm grateful. That's why, that's why, I'm, grateful. Yeah. No, that's why I'm grateful that I didn't see a Disney movie. Because if I had seen a Disney movie, I probably would have gone something like, "Ooh, that's pretty. That's like a big. I can watch cartoons at home." Well, no, know. not exactly. Because yeah. my experience of Disney movies was the horror part of it. It's like being right. afraid of clowns. Like when we saw, or when I saw uh, Snow White. I, that was scary. Especially, okay, the most scariest Disney movie at the time when I was a kid was Pinocchio. It still is. When, when, well, that's what I'm trying to when say. When you take kids selling to donkeys, that's just no, wrong. No, no, when they're on the water and the big, sh- and the whale comes and everything. Now, that's real. Like, that can't happen. But I tell you, <laughs> no, no, that, that donkey scene. Oh, my days. <laughs> that's self harming bad. So, I, I so, my mom my moment taking me to see the sound of music. <laughs> oh, wow. With the that's sing-along cool. version. There was there was oh, subtitles yeah. with the songs on. Everyone was sitting. Mum was a mum was a very yeah. Catholic yeah. lady. My dad was totally the opposite. My dad was a dirty, yeah. dirty bastard. Oh, yeah. oh man, you did really mean that. So whenever sound of music was on telly, it was always on. Yeah. And my dad would go, "We've seen this a billion times." And then my dad was the same quiet man. So it just yeah. Got, so well, like, yeah, because it's about that fight. Yeah, know. it's just but, John Wayne. And so so numbers. so if we're, gonna, to, if we're gonna go like those kind of like chintzy, uh, quirky uh, Disney thing for a second. Have you seen um, Pippi Longstocking? No. That's no. not something I would tell them. Heidi? I, I know of them. I know yeah, no, the story. Well, well, you were, the but at the time, as a kid, you were supposed to be one. Well, we were no, forced to watch these no. movies, so I'm sorry. No, I was playing football somewhere. Yeah, I was out just girls. Yeah, you trying to say something about me, right? Just girls. Yeah. <laughs> that was literally, you know. I like Pippi Longstocking. Imagine she had these long wheels. Climbing trees, doing great... Really good wheelies. I'll take good wheelies. Um, Trying to get home in time for six million dollar man. That's indeed. Right. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Well speaking, well, speaking, well, speaking of nice segue to Mr. Hives because, like, uh, <laughs> you know, what I was going to like say, hey, you know, what about you know our version of the hero film, you know, from those time periods, and like I was talking about it today, where it's like for me, I mean, we're talking about pre, you know, Marvel, you know, DC on film. And for me, it was Johnny Weissmuller, uh-huh. you know, like Tarzan, you know. I mean, uh-huh. well, so I said he was my favorite, you know. What about you? Favorite Tarzan or favorite hero? No, well, well, you, well, no, either way, but it, it'd be Tarzan. nice to go. I gotta, no, no, we're we're nice to stay in one place for a second, and we'll go to hero. I, I was, but I was, I was, I was, Lex Barker was a cool Tarzan. But anyway. No man, he had a bow and arrow. I think I, call, I think I call Lex Barker the shoot the Tarzan with the shoes. Cause didn't he? Only, <laughs> every time you saw him that. running in the trees, you know, I don't know. Well, Lord Gordon's got, Mark, got the biggest Tarzan. Oh yeah, see that's what I mean. Didn't you Mark's do that? Didn't you do that though? Elijah you would, you would name him like Gordon Scott was the Hercules yeah. Tarzan. Yeah. Ron Eli was the old Tarzan. Yeah. You know, Lex Barker was the one with the shoes. You know, <laughs> so that's what I mean. But I just used to think that the Lex Barker, the fact that he had a bow and arrow for some bizarre reason, made, yeah. him, made him cool for some reason. I never yeah. ever. He probably had pants as well. Really weird. No, I love Tarzan. Tarzan's the man. Man, no, no. But see, that's just what I'm trying to say is because I know you're not a big superhero uh, fan, but I mean, Tarzan was. He lived in the jungle on his own, he knew everything. Oh, don't get into that. Hey, all he knew was Ungawa. Ungawa, Ungawa. Ungawa, yeah. 
And who didn't go there? Oh, Ngoa. And boy. He taught him. Um, it's like Michael Jackson, wasn't he? He just taught him his little monkey all day. Isn't it? Jita. <laughs> Climb trees. He wants to be Peter Pan. Maybe that's why Michael Jackson wanted to be Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, so Tarzan now has a Peter Pan oh, fixation. Oh, my days. Now, there's a script. So Guys, so get the script so ready. So I'm, so I'm, so I've got my funding. I want to see that movie. Mine was more. Mine was more Lee Majors and... Oh, well, hell yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Hell TV yeah. Was. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. You now you swam back to TV. Hell yeah, who wasn't a big Lee Major fan with the whole big action jack yeah. jacket? I mean, you know, I'm a man, man and I can still say that Lee Major was awesome. Ooh, six what? minutes on my projector. I had the dog. I had the dog. You had the dog. I had the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just basically it was a projector. You had to have a white wall. Yeah. And just through the screen, I mean, just a picture of Lee. <laughs> oh, that's it. I had, Is like, that I what you did? I, you had a picture of Lee, and what were you doing when you watched the picture of Lee? Well, you know. Nah, but, um, <laughs> it's such a great, it's, it's, it's strange, obviously, because, you know, sticking with TV for the moment, Six Million Dollar Man, it, it's what was great about the first season. I don't want to get into too much detail about it. It was very general. It was more but it was actually, a book. Well, yeah, season. exactly. It, 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 it was, yeah, and it, was, it kind of had an edge to it, and they kind of figured, oh, kids watch it, let's just lighten it up. Yeah. You know, let's have him fight Sasquatch. And you're like, oh, really? Let's give him a girlfriend. That's how I can do it. Let's give him bionic dogs. No, 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 no. Well, the big swirly thing that I have to walk through to give me a head. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. But, um... But like I said, I was just clear memories of, of every kid in the every every particularly the boys in the playground mm-hmm. at school just running around in slow motion. Yeah. Look at that! I got the stripes. Yeah. Yeah. Or you throw something, you, just, <laughs> you want to pass something to somebody, you just go. Who didn't do the What a great idea that was! But you know, I mean, you think about it. Okay, we haven't got the special effects from to run. Yeah, slow so we down. slow it down. down. But once again, that we would play with my head because you'd have footage of the of the bad guys running away, cut to him running slowly, and then bizarrely catching up with them. And you he was think, Lee Majors. What? He was Lee Majors. Who? And the well, thing, of course, and he's fast. Slowly, what do you mean, fast. how is that bizarre? He's fast. Well, no, he because one minute we're seeing some guys running at normal speed, and they are running. No, but if you think about it, you think, God, yeah. that guy's running so fast. And he's running so slow. Uh, he's still caught him. Tortoise in the hair. Get you. I get you. I didn't think it's like, it's up, I no, it's running like, so it's slow. Like that he was running so fast. Jason. They're all running through the woods. Jason's oh, always like, close up of feet, just scrunching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, what's the Next thing you know, is, you know, Tom Savini splatter everywhere. So go. anyway, so I mean, you know, like you're staying with like the hero theme in uh, TV or in film. I mean, like what other heroes? We had. I mean, I like, grew up in an era of like, like ma- macho, of macho guys. It was real. It wasn't. Well, like Burt Reynolds. Well, no, no, no oh. beyond. Well, Burt was fun, but I'm talking. I'm talking Charles Bronson. I'm talking Lee Lee Marvin. We're talking. Uh, you know, Bronson movies like Lee. Bro- Bronson. What? <laughs> I'm not talking. We're Bronson. talking movies like like Prime Cut. Yeah. And French Connection 2. Yeah. And it's when we're real, 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 you know, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you, Stone Killer, you know, the, mecha- the original version of The Mechanic. When you've got guys who just kind of like really could cut glass with a stare. Killer Elite was kind Killer Elite, Elite. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Well, so I mean, pretty much it sounds like you also like a lot of the, the different things, you going more into that like uh, 70s grit. Uh, spy Cold War kind of thriller where those heroes you're talking about, but we're, or you could talk in more of the more broader sense like the uh, uh, Magnus Seven or the uh, Hooper. Again, again you know, show most of them on TV. Magnus Seven, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I was things. just watching Return of the Magnus Seven the uh, just the other day, and at first when I you know I acquired it, um, I was thinking, yeah, I watched it because I love the Magnus Seven, mm-hmm. but I always had the uh, the sequels in my mind as like, eh, you know, like Magnus Seven Ride and all that with George mm-hmm. Kennedy and all that. And I had totally yeah, forgotten good. that Return was not just a sequel, but it was what you were brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But actually, so what I was looking at, it's the only I was like, oh my sequel. God, because I, just, you know, I, just, I just completely love you, brother. But then my whole thing was, it's like, I think we talked about it before, it's like, because he hated Steve McQueen so much and that experience, Actually, Return was the same movie. His movie, but it's just yeah, without yeah, yeah, Steve McQueen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, because I actually still don't mind. Been, you know, Robert I don't Fuller, mind. But Guns and Magnus Sons, okay. It was great. Guns and Magnus Sons, okay. Well, you okay. say rides are awful. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's, 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 it's essentially it's a TV movie. With, you know, with Lee Van Cleef oh. getting a paycheck. Yeah. You know, yeah. but what I what I did. I mean, there's one there's one image in Guns and Magnus as a kid. Remember, first time I saw that it was on like the first time I was on TV over here. 
and like there's an image of like um, the devastation that the bad guys have done, and there's all these peasant men have been have been hanged, mm. and it's like all down the street. And mm. like, I remember thinking, oh, that's a bit strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the only one of the series that was a double A. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing that filmed that really, going back to really, like what affected you so much, the f- image wise, the first thing that you, know, I, I remember seeing the trailer to the Sentinel. Sentinel. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is actually quite a good Michael Winner film, I believe. It's kind of like a sequel or re, retread of Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, it's exactly yeah, what it's, 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 exactly it's, it's, it's kind of like, oh, Rosemary's yeah. Baby worked. It's, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, what a yeah, nun. With, with it was just John Carradine standing yeah. in the window with his eyes all glazed. Oh, like, oh, oh Carradine. Oh, I'm scared to... Yeah, yeah. That, was just, that was just a trailer. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that was also that thing about when you talk about the Lee Major effects. It's like... Let's do these uh, telekinetic effects. So you had the Sentinel, you had the Fury, you the know, with Andrew yeah, right. Stevens too. Yeah, yeah. whereas like we don't have to actually do anything; just you know, move yeah. the camera really fast. Yeah. So, you know, I actually don't mind the Fury. I think the Fury. Patrick, Patrick or, or, or yeah, yeah, they like the Fury too. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, like uh, what an end! What a way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's yeah let's show that let's show that effect seven times. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 that's right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Great, great John Williams score as well. It's a fantastic yeah. film. So I mean, uh, studying here, like 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 your hero uh, hero uh, things um, that you enjoy, maybe. There's one thing we actually have of, of interesting that neither of us have mentioned of that era, and still to this day, or is it simply because of in that time, particularly in the seventies. He was really he was above everybody else, and that's uh, Mr. Eastwood. Well, I think he, I feel it's like it's everybody else, and then there's Clint. We were talking to somebody about this the other day about Eastwood, and I, he seems to always get overlooked. I know that that sounds weird, but every time someone's talking about a genre, of yeah, film, yeah, yeah, it's because he's been there forever. Yeah, I, 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 I actually didn't figure out why he was overlooked because he's a TV guy. And, and no, 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 because, no, wait, wait, we look, we look back at Eastwood with love, right, that's cool, but while it was happening, it's kind of like when, pe- I hate it when people say, like, you get to the end of a holiday and say, oh, that went quick, no, it didn't, every day and every hour was excruciating, right, it's like, Eastwood started out on TV with Rawhide, yeah, yeah. and then when he couldn't get a break, remember, he couldn't get a break, and he had to go off to Italy to do the Sergio Leone films, which we think are classic and major, but at the time, nobody did. Okay, so, yeah, like, yeah, the films totally came out, nobody cared. They you know what I mean? They, they did over here. They were huge. Yeah, because they came to you late. Yeah, we did get the You know what I mean? Yeah. They came to you late. What I'm trying to say is you, you came to him as a fan where you, you binged him. You, you did the early version of binging when it came to Eastwood. I'm talking about as it went along. It's like mm. this guy was just a jobbing actor. He was good. There was something about him. He had charisma and all that kind of stuff. So then when he came out with Dirty Harry, it was like, whoa, who the hell is that? Hey, you've been watching him forever. Or like, I'm not really sure I agree with that because you got to got to remember, 1968, the biggest box office draw of 1968 was Where Eagles There. <laughs> Who's the co it, it, okay. It's an ensemble, though. Well, yeah, but it's sold on Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood. Cool. Cool. He's already had Hang 'em High, which was a box office hit for him. He has had another he TV had, movie. He actually, um, he stop. He had um, what a string of hits, not blockbusters. He had a string of hits. Where he was there was the first blockbuster he was in. Then he, what we, we, we you know, he, he had not so much. They, they, were, they, they made money, but they weren't massive. You had two meals with Sister Sarah. You had uh, mm-hmm. the Beguiled as well, and then yeah. everything changed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then everything changed. No, it didn't. It, 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 everything changed in seventy one. That man came out before Harry. No, is it right? Other right. Other right. All right, man. Other right. We're always correct on the timeline. But uh, well, no, but you got to remember because Dirty Harry, um, he had made so much money for Paramount. Okay, at the time that he actually was given carte and Universal, that he was given carte blanche to. He said he wanted to direct. He wanted to direct. Um, they said, you know, well, okay, okay, just to keep him happy, because mm-hmm. they knew that he was a nice little money earner for them. And then they said, okay, well, you can you can do this. He said, right, okay. And and they said to him, you can do it, but we can't pay you for it. He said, yeah, sure, fine, just let me do it, just let me do it, just let me do it. And of course, that gives you play Misty for you, which is mm-hmm. actually technically his second movie. Can anyone tell me his first movie? The uh, second movie he did. Yeah, the second movie. Yeah, Breeze was his second movie. Right. Was his third movie. Third movie. Well, now, it's actually, to be fair, to me, it was a documentary. It was about oh, the directing true. process of Don Siegel, which he filmed on the set of The Big Art. Right. 
Oh, oh, which is a nice little half hour piece, which I do recommend. So he started oh. out making a documentary. He made one of the first one behind, behind the scenes and whatnot, which is actually like a frank view of, of the of the filmmaking mm-hmm. pro- director's process. That was more frank than uh, Francis Ford Coppola on. <laughs> 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 on the oh, of hard of hard of oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think with with what we're going back to cleanse. I think because after after death, after after he, mm. he was just there forever every year. Click, mm. click, click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just became. Well, it was with the it was, you knew it was going to be good. You knew it was going yeah, yeah, yeah. well, to be fantastic. Well, you knew something. Why? He's overlooked because he was for a long time the biggest box yeah. office draw as a the biggest box office star. For like a good but unlike a lot of actors and directors who came and went. He stayed yeah. for 30 years. He's yeah, just, and he's still, just still is. Still, and still is. Yeah. He's just still knocking them out. Yeah. He's just. Yeah. Which and I think people go, oh, you know, it's either it's you know it's Bronson, it's Reynolds, it's he, you know, he, whoever he, the player. He's gotten a lifetime achievement award at some point. Uh, he's been given the Orton Thorberg Award. He's already had. He's had that. He had that like 15 years. But ago. everyone's come and gone. All these big, yeah. uh, you know, Stallone, Schwarzenegger. They've all had their day in the sun and gone off. And uh, but he Clint is still, still there, there yeah. well, at well, the yeah. top of his game. He's now all right. He's made a few little, you know, problem movies. Uh-huh. Would but, you uh, say that he? So would you say that he's your uh, legend then? You should be if you if you're if you're a film buff mm. if you're a film maker as well. He's got. It's interesting that he's now be. he's now transcended just the, being the movie star. He's now yeah. one of the most respected directors. Yeah. Yeah. Like of Everyone, the last, of the last to forty-five years. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, um, he's an A-list director. He, 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 his films he can sell a film and not appear in it. Yep. And mm. still, you know what I mean. Mm. Mm. Although that said, his cameo he has a great cameo in Jersey Boys. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to look for it though. It's very oh, slow. Right. It's very slow. But that's cool. Down. So you mean like was it under makeup? You mean? No, 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 no. I'm not gonna give it away. Just I'm not gonna give it away. Just, 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 just not seen it, bro. Uh, and whatnot. I mean, um, I remember sitting. I don't know, this is some retro in my book. A few years back, sitting watching Gran Torino. Oh, mm, yeah. I'm, th- I'm thinking, oh, I'm, uh, no, it's still, it's still, it's right. still, it still is, it is still, I a, I still, it's still it's retro because one, it's still an old movie, but also, movies. also, also it was a nice way for a legendary character like himself to go out as well. Yeah. I think it was just you know. What I, mean? I actually think it's a shame because he said that right. That's it. That's my last movie as an actor. Well, he thought he thought he would. Yeah, but look how it looked. You know, he thought he would be. I mean, why wouldn't he? He thought he would be. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but I, I think because if he had finished on that as an actor, that's, then that's like the perfect send off to go. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, um, that's what I, mean. I think I think you'd be I judging it the same way if you if you were to watch it at the same time as like Harry Brown, which I actually do like. Mm. Mm. Same. Michael, mm. Scott Michael Caine, you mean? Yeah. yeah. They are technically similar movies. Yeah. But Harry Brown just falls into farce about halfway through. <laughs> to me, I always come across cool. the Daily Mail yeah. fantasy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I did, I wanted to like, I, I was just watching yeah. it. I, was I, I, I know it, I don't know it fully. Did, it's know, not. did he die in the end? Was this? Harry Brown. Brown. Yeah, he did. Spoilers. 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 But, <laughs> Torino was just, because yeah. he died and put a performance in like that as well. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I can't actually fault it. I don't see, there's, there's no weak spots. In terms of either performances, direction, and more importantly, how it, the photography yeah. is just. Yeah. Well, I could even stomach his duet with Jamie Cullum at the end. It, 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 it fits. Yeah, it all fits. Oh, that was my Jersey Boys. No, no, no. Um, the, the, the Gran Torino. Gran Torino. Uh, duet? Yeah. 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 Jamie Cullum. Yeah, right at the end. He's Not on film. No, no, no. It's oh. on the soundtrack and whatnot. But um, it's, oh. it's, it is the. Oh, possibly. It would have been the best send off he could possibly have had. But then again, I still think it is because I've not seen. Um, was it for the love of the game? No, it was, uh, yeah, no, no. Um, the baseball movie. Yeah, 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 for the love of the game. But he so wasn't even me. supposed to be in it. In... No, he did it as a favour, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that cool. was. He's a cool yeah, guy. So, yeah. but, but Anthony, no, is. But so, like, you know, I mean, I think that's. I mean, I mean, I think that's. A, what? About uh, fifteen minutes. Um. Sure. So I think that like, uh, legends is a good is, is 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 a good topic where um for me, you know, Sydney Portier, you know, mm-hmm. I remember putting him on the iconic cool page because I thought no no he give this man some respect because when you talk about the same level that we're talking about Eastwood is is Portier. I mean from the beginning to now he's still he's still around. I mean he's not making films anymore, you know what I mean, which is a shame. But you know, and he has done his level of directing, but I mean. For me, you know, um, he's an iconic legend, you know. I mean, all of those early years of making films in a period where people weren't making films, like as, as a black man, to have a leading role mm. and all that. It's, I mean, for me, it's a shame, in a way, that he got that 
award for uh, Lillian in the field as opposed to all the other stuff that he's done well, before that or around that. But at least he got it, you know what I mean? But in, in, in that fashion... In like the 50s and 60s, what's interesting about Poirier is that the actual roles he was playing would be seen, could be perceived as being non-threatening to like a, a white, ma- white mainstream audience or anything. Non-threatening. Like. They're all very, wait, wait, very wait. asexual, yeah. you know. Well, yes. Fast I mean, forward 10 years to the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, boom. You know, I mean, I actually think watching Sidney Poitier growing up, he was an icon, you're absolutely right. Yeah. He was an icon. Yeah. He was like, he was that black guy. Wow, the, the one's yeah. made it. One's in the yeah. same way that, like, we had Muhammad Ali. I mean, but, 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 he would, he but, 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 but I'll say, but he was never cool. For me, well, as, 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 as a young black man, to, to look up to these characters yeah. on, that I see on the screen, he was never cool. And that completely changed right. with this movie. Uh, the Dirty Dozen? When the Dirty Dozen, because that, that, that gave I mean, us Jim Brown. Jim, okay, Jim, right, let's not jump from Sydney. I just say that point it was cool to me. Like, well, yeah, but, but, but not in a kind of. But, but wait, wait, let me from one black guy to another. Yeah, but let me let me just say, he was so disrespectful. You yeah. say he was non-threatening. I disagree. He was. He had what you call righteous anger. Righteous anger used right. Uh-huh. You know, he he had the bubbling cauldron of the '60s. I mean, if you think about in the heat of the night. You know, when he slaps the. Uh, when he slaps the, the guy. Yeah, 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 I get, no, I get all that. I'm not it, taking it, that away. It, 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 yeah, but. You say he's not cool. Everybody's well, no, like, whoa, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, I understand that, but at not the same time, movie, but, but at the same time, he is very respectful. He's a bit like, he's, he's not like my, he's not like, he's not like my dad. Well, what do you want him to do? I want to watch a guy like my dad. My Jim Brown's more like my dad. He's suck and jive. You know well, no, I'm not talking about the, that. It's just something, it's just something about the guy. that. I, but one thing that's always overlooked about Sidney Poitier, and, and I think it should be, it should be shouted about, is the fact that number one, okay, yes, he did all this. Yes, he did all that. But number one, he's not. And I repeat, not an Afro African American. He is not American for starters. Yeah, no, I know. And I'm that's never. That's guy, always. Yeah, play, it's always played down. And as somebody who's from West Indian descent, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want that celebrated. You know, what I mean, one of us guys got there, went there, played played by their own rules, flipped it round or whatever. You know? No, no, no. I, no, I, I think you. Put it to a white guy was more. It was safe. He played yeah. it safe. Yeah. He played it for both audiences. Mm. Well, yeah. Which I, which is cool in itself. Yeah. Mm. But but could I also say it wasn't be popular in the other I mean yeah. actually I mean I know so many women to this day I know so many women to this day who who, who fell in love with him who actually would want to marry him you know oh, well, but then I mean, but then you got people like Richard Browntree mm-hmm. and women didn't want to marry him mm-hmm. they just wanted him. No, you know that change, you know, that's, and, that's another, and that's another, that's another sort of cultural shift, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> but 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 what I'm trying to say is go back to the kind of coolness of it, you know, that I wanted to get through is the fact that that like um, because it's the acting. I'm talking about the acting, mm-hmm. right? I'm talking about like he, you know, just like like in the suit, you know, he's he was the man, you know, he had stature, he had poise and grace, but his acting was top notch. You know, like I'm look I'm looking at the movies like uh with Richard Rick Whitmark, like No Way Out. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the Slender Threat and Bancroft. Mm-hmm. That is that movie is riveting. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like uh, a man who can just act with his eyes, with his stamina, with his with with Stature, excuse me, with his words. You know, he held people. He oh, held people. Oh. What's the film he did with the, oh, it was an 80s movie, River Phoenix, was it? Oh, oh the little, Nick, uh, yeah. little, uh, oh, little Nikita. Nikita. I like that, I like that movie. I, 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 I was thinking it was Deadly Pursuit. What was that called? It was called uh, Shoot to Kill. Shoot to Kill, yeah. That's okay. They're okay. To me, those were kind of like, oh my God, so you don't do I it. You're going his, down the road. One of his best understated and kind of unsung performances, which is relatively recent, it was in the 90s, is in uh, is sleepers. No, mm. Sorry, sneakers. With sneakers, Robert sneakers. He yeah. is hilarious in that yeah. because yeah. he's constantly being wound up it was by great double Robert Redford. Too. That's Dan, a good Dan, ensemble film. Yeah, that's a that's great that's ensemble yeah. movie. Yeah. David yeah. Strathairn steals the movies. The blind guy. Yeah. 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 Really, really like kind of sarcastic blind guy. Yeah. 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 But, but again, he gave, but, but, he gave us stare crazy. Yeah, he gave, he gave us stare crazy. But then my last, but my. But my last tribute film was the film that he died in, because Sydney, you know, hey, Sydney never dies. But like the film that he died in, which was the Bedford incident. Oh yeah. You know, and again, that was like Richard Whitmark and stuff like that. And I mean, again, another film that's riveting. If you wanted to watch a film about acting, it's Sydney. 
That's all I want to say. You know what I mean? I mean, so I'm not saying because he's he's a Batman. Oh, he must be great. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm talking about a guy who's like kind of cool, who's a legend, who's still around, still alive. God bless him. And but you know, I mean, there are other black actors as a kid that I I, I looked up to in a different way. <laughs> Are we going to go down to the gym? Are we going to go down the gym, Kelly Roots, again? Well, no, we're, no, we're, I was just going to go down any more. No, no, we've got to have Kelly Roots. Woody Strode and people yeah, like Woody that Strode. or whatever. But, um, you know. Uh, oh, Woody Strode. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but what I actually found interesting was we talk about like you know great turning points or, you know, you go and see this movie, you go and see that movie. But when it came to, like, I mean, my cousin Philip, um, he's from Liverpool, he's, um, he was the one who really educated me. In the, in the in, of what else was available out there. I mean, he was the guy who would go and see. Uh, he would always harp on about like, uh, oh yeah, I saw this movie. I saw this movie. I saw. This, he was living in London at the time. Oh, I saw this movie on Dublin. It was really, really cool. It was really scary. You can't watch it. Blah 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 blah. And he basically tell me the story of Shivers. Mm. Oh, you know, I and, and I'll be like, and I'll be like, and I'll be like, what? Who was the? Wait, wait, Is that Keith Adam? Who was the art director in Shivers? Oh, I mean. Oh, well, well, I know the associate producer was Ivan Reitman. No, he was also the art director. Was he? Yes. Yeah, he was, 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 was a producer. Well, because well, well, it was such a small crew, there were like 17 different yeah. jobs, you know what right. I mean? But, yeah, um... Produced Cannibal Girls? Yeah, 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 I'm just saying. That's and, uh, oh, my God, Ivan Reitman. And produced the National Anthem State Show. But I remember watching that in the theater up in the Earl Cinema up in the Bronx. And uh, everything again in the balcony. Don't know, ask me why I'm in the balcony a lot. But because uh, <laughs> they want to let you near anyway. Uh, <laughs> I do want to let you downstairs. <laughs> I wanted it to rain on the people <laughs> below. There's a big sign up, there's a <laughs> balcony only him. Oh, yeah. Anyway. But, um, but like I say, so it was movies like that, and I mean, I always remember he had a flat and he had a cool, he had a, this is brand new, he had the um, he had the taxi driver poster and things like that, and it was like, well, this is this is different. I don't really know that. And so by the time VHS comes out, I've got a list of movies mm-hmm. I want to watch. And you know, and we're going back maybe six, seven years. So mm-hmm. starting at around about 74, 75, you know, you I am cramming well over this course of like maybe a month or two. I've watched Shivers. I've watched most of Cronenberg's, if not all the Cronenberg's back catalogue up until 1981. Mm-hmm. You know, I've watched, you know, uh, uh, Romero's movies I've watched. That was the thing, that was the blah, big blah, deal. Blah, blah, as soon blah, as VHS, yeah. Yeah. Totally 1881 yeah. VHS, in, you, could, you could find stuff that you'd heard so much about. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, some of it was disappointing. I'll, I'll give you. I'm not going to lie to you, but some of it was 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 even better. Yeah. yeah. It's even better, you know. I remember yeah. the first time I saw Fist of Fury was the first Bruce Lee film I saw. And I've been yeah. absolutely blown away yeah. by it. Mm. I mean, it's my favorite. A life changing. Yeah. Blown away by it. Oh my God. See the scar on my hand? Mm-hmm. No. Watch it, Fist of Fury. <laughs> Came home from that movie, too shattered now. the mirror. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that just. And then, then I mean, I hadn't seen Enter the Dragon at that point. I don't no, know. that was the first, because that was I the very first VHS I ever saw. Yeah. I'd seen Fist of Fury and Big Boss, they were the first two. Yeah. yeah. Um, Big Boss, I'm still not that fond of, really. I, um, I think, had you seen that first, I think you'd. you'd possibly. Yeah, because possibly. You, can see, you can actually see the evolution yeah, yeah. as it goes along. And, so, and, I, think and I, do, I don't first. know, I love, I, love, I love Big Boss, but yeah, it's it's nowhere near yeah. as good. I think, I think, I think, simply think, because he has less control. Yeah. I think because of the name um, change, it really yeah. confused a lot of people, though, as well, you know, because actually uh, Return of the Dragon, which was Way of the Dragon, which was supposed to have been made before Enter the Dragon. It was. That, like, it came out afterwards. So yeah. I can remember, like, you know, being in the Bronx and stuff and uh, we've seen it to the dragon and stuff and then Bruce Lee, we find out about Bruce Lee dying and then he's returning the dragons in the theater. So everybody yeah. like, climbed into the theater. So, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? And how can we look so weird? How can we look so weird? Yeah. 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 So don't have to do you know that for another 10 years. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Really, you know. yeah. I, remember, I remember seeing the trailer for Game of Death at the, remember at the pictures mm. and thinking, oh, and it depressed me because, you know, uh, it, I'm actually seeing it's a brand new Bruce Lee movie. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm still not old enough to see it. And it's like, yeah. oh. but getting back to like Fist of Fury and the Dragon and stuff, and uh, just seeing it, it was just seeing those movies was just. I think the thing oh. the first time we saw it, I mean, obviously we saw it pan and scanned and oh, yeah. badly dubbed, yeah. and it was just it had that look well, to the it. Right, the right UK prints were uncut. They were uncut. The first batch mm. were them. Yeah. yeah. Well, the way the Dragon was still cut, it didn't have that double, no. double unchuck scene. Yeah. Well, see, I Probably mean, like, I mean, again, you know, like, maybe it should be said, I mean, it's a shame about the way uh, British cinema got things uh, so late 
uh, a lot of times you guys often talk about how you watch these movies on VHS and everything else like that because you know like uh, you know as a as a last well, topic, don't get released at all I mean, yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. yeah. like you know because as a last topic I thought would have been interesting is what was your first blockbuster you know so like you know like for me I mean of course you would you know talk about you know, Jaws or Star Wars and everything like that. But for me, it was actually going to the cinema with my uncle to go see Superman. You know, first blockbuster, read. really? That late? Well, I mean, what's well, Star Wars? First one I want to talk about. Jaws. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I saw the disaster movie, but I remember going to see the disaster movies, which were before those. You know. Oh well, yeah. What do you mean, like Poseidon Avenger? Yeah, and well, not the Poseidon Avenger, but uh, I definitely saw. Tower I saw. Of I think Tower of Tower 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 I saw Airport 74, sorry, 75, 77, and 80. Yeah, but people uh, consider, <laughs> yeah, but people consider Jaws actually be the first. Jaws, Jaws was it's the first movie. summer blockbuster yeah, it movie. It people. wasn't the it was the first movie to break the hundred million dollar back. Hundred million dollar. Um, uh, everything changed. Everything yeah, changed yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant. But, I mean, but like, but I mean, in terms I've of big hit movies, and, but there were big hit movies that people were queuing up, you know, lines around the block to go and see before that. I think that's slightly understated. I saw Water Gargantuas in the cinema. You know, I mean, so. I mean, it's I just, love that film. But, uh, you know, and, film. but also yeah. movies like, you know, I remember going to see, and packed houses, I've been, to, you know, prior to Star Wars, prior to Jaws. I think it was completely so But I just know, think that it's, I think with Jaws, I mean, what, but the difference being is it was so big. And then Star Wars, my God, even bigger. And Close Encounters. And then Close Superman. Encounters and Superman and whatnot. All in, all in like, a, seriously, all in two years of each other. Yeah, yeah, Two or three years of each other. You've had these, yeah. like, a batch of them. It made that little old school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean like either way though, it's just like these these big event movies. Yeah. You know. Um uh, what did you see in the cinema? I mean I remember seeing Raiders in the cinema. Yeah. Raiders. Like I mean, that, Bob, you know? Max two or so. <laughs> Well, I should not, but I saw Mad Max 2. You saw yeah, Mad Max 2. I did, yeah. Shame on I know, I'm shocked. Oh, that was the behind the third Thunderdome. I saw Thunderdome. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. It's I like, think, yeah, what was Mad Max 2 called? Road Warrior. Oh, Road Warrior. You called it Road Warrior. We called it Mad Max 2 because that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, no wonder yeah. it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think everything from after 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Everything. Right, right, right. So, so now I was on my own turn, turn. I was 15 and I could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see this. Yeah. I, I don't remember I the first 18 movie I actually saw the movies. I mean, I remember the first double A I saw, which was, uh, uh, which was I remember like kind of beefing up a bit for that. And that was Conan. Yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. first thing one mm. but, uh, I remember I should take him so to, like, the first to, time... to the cinema. My yeah. dad had always taken me to the cinema. Yeah. I remember at one point I took my dad, I went, took my dad to, cinema to see Firefox. And, oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Because I went, we should go and see this. And yeah. it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's good. It's good, Dad. I loved it. it. Uh, Murphy's Law, he fell asleep. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> is, we didn't. Uh, I don't know. Carol's so grass is great. It's great that. in that movie. Uh, I'm, 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 Karen. <laughs> I remember. 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 That's what I you should have. Yeah. You definitely should have seen that. Definitely it should be, the, It's interesting, actually, because that movie, movie, a couple of years ago, it still to this day could cause problems because there was complaints. Because mm-hmm. ITV4 or whatever channel screened it. They screened it in the yeah. full cut. They screened mm-hmm. it uncut. And uh, in this it's in this awesome. country, folks, for those who don't know, Death Wish 2, despite being, what, now 35 years old, um, it's still cut on, on yeah. DVD in this country due to its... It is it's, pretty it's, it's, well, it's the post rapes, it's not the rapes no, themselves, okay. it's the post what happens afterwards. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too. I but remember, anyway, I remember. ITV's big mainstream channel. Yeah, we'll yeah. show. I remember, <laughs> I remember, I seeing, I remember yeah. seeing the trailer for Black Bell Jones on the little TV set, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and you know, uh-huh. actually uh-huh. having to sneak out. My mom sleeping on the couch, having to sneak out to go to the pictures to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember coming home from school one afternoon, and um, about 82, 83. And my mum, my dad was, my dad was on my dad's in, in bed. Mum's at work. Mm. Mum had to go sneak around because you don't have to leave the dad up because he'll kick out, kick me yeah. out. Like, on the coffee table is a VHS of like um, SS experiment camp. I thought that's why he's oh, into German. Yeah, that looks good. That looks but, really good. Uh-huh. Hang, woman hanging upside down on the cross. And I thought, so what do you what do you say that was like one of your first dirty movies? It's not even a dirty movie. It's not even, no, well, it feels dirty though, doesn't it? No, it feels, it feels, it feels, feels dirty. Grubby. Not dirty. No, what I grubby. thought was dirty. No, what I thought was never, dirty. Sh- Let me. I never wanted the bloody big yeah. Yeah. VHS yeah. to be so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
he had the, uh, the little... You what? Are you posh? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's down to Abby over there. Watch out, this is Ben McCann. Awful. Yeah. Awful. You know something that you go, ooh, that was that much? Yeah. <laughs> and then, after all that, the film finished, 90 minutes later, like two hours later, my dad got up and went to, there was a film we watched last night, you should have a look at it, it's yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, so I, 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 I think yeah. for me, Lair of the White Worm was one of those. Really? You know really? what I mean? That like. Lair of the White Worm. Remember what's an angel? Have you seen Angel of Heat? Angel, angel Heat. Yes, angel yes, 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 yes. Angel I remember me, Joe, Joe Walker. Yeah. Yeah. The girl with the curly hair and stuff Marriage like that. Angels. Who was in. Yeah. Oh, Marriage. 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 Beyond, Marriage. Beyond, Marriage. Beyond the Grand Tour. Marriage Angels. Yeah, yeah. Where's Rabbit? Um, Rabbit. Watching that. Because she's one. naked all the way through. Yeah. Wow. We watched that on, a, on like yeah. a, we were off in the summer holidays and on the yeah, afternoon. Yeah. 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 She's just naked all the way through. It not happens in it, but we were like so. <laughs> but she's like, naked. Oh, she's naked. <laughs> well, I mean, I had seen my, my brother. My, one of my brothers left the tape out of uh, of uh, zombie zombie doe zombie zombie flesh eaters. Uh, Fulci's absolute stone cold classic uh, for my dad to watch one Friday night, and I remember I wasn't allowed to. He said I wasn't allowed to watch it. I'd already seen it, and my <laughs> and I I was I was in bed and on a Friday night, uh, late one Friday night, and my brother had been out and he'd come home and apparently the next morning he was telling me the story about how he'd found my father watching it and he was like. And he said he'd never seen a black man turn green. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm I have. I have. <laughs> I remember the first time I watched a um, horror film with my dad. That I watched The Exorcist with my yeah. dad. Um, and I was about, God, that was when, 80, 82. 82, yeah, 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 82 I seen it. 85. Sitting on the couch, watching my dad. My dad's seen it, and my dad's seen it on its yeah. initial. And he just kept looking at me. as though to say, like, what's yeah. he, he going to make of it? I was just like, all the way through it. The book was always in the house. And that right. Was, it was a cup with it. Yeah, yeah. Black the, the, the school the photograph. Yeah. Cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always in the house. And I was always like, no, no. No, no don't no, put it yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd remember, be, remember, remember, remember that uh, advert for it where it was like holographic and everything like that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? 74 or 75? 73. 73? My God, I was even younger. I mean, when was always like, you should watch that. Mumbi and with their background. Yeah. No, 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 you shouldn't watch that, but that'd be the only No wonder it terrified me. Oh, I, my, my parents had a really family. bizarre one. They, they didn't mind violence, me watching violence or stuff. And and it was really kind of all the sexy stuff that they, they kind of frowned upon or whatever, that, that I used to find a high hitting underneath a box somewhere or something like that. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean... Uh, I was lucky in the sense that you know, I was, as a, even as a small kid, when I'd be watching like the hor- the horrors or whatever, it'd mm. be like you know, I'll be told, you know, this isn't real, this is just make believe, just like mm. in comics you're reading or something like that, you know. So I already had that grounding, uh, which frankly not enough parents do. But, yeah. You know, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think their their level of thinking of what is bad for us was the bar was a bit higher than it is today and everything like but, that. But uh, I mean, one thing is actually, it's actually which which once again reminds me of an interesting thing as well. Well, what movies? were big in your house. There's usually like a, like a TV show where like every family member or whatever, would def- oh yeah, yeah, that's on, Greg, we'll all watch this. Especially in the days before VCRs where you watched it when it was on, because if you didn't, you'd miss it, end of, you know. I mean, I remember watching, I mean, the Planet 8 movies, and the Pink, Planet 8, Pink Panther, and the, uh, the, the two Flint movies were just huge oh, yeah. in our house. Yeah. If they were on, I guarantee virtually every family member would be sat around that, that screen. I think the right, know what it is for me? Wait, wait, oh, yeah, what yeah. it is for me? No. Every Thanksgiving, King Kong vs. Godzilla. No. Yes. My cousins, everybody gathered around the TV and they all are doing their own voice track for it. <laughs> it had to happen. But you had an advantage. <laughs> you had an advantage. Doing the you had more chance of seeing that though than we did. Because I, I saw, I remember seeing that maybe once on TV. Uh, well, 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 I'm talking like I'm talking in the mid '70s as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we only had like we had three yeah. channels, and, and that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that was yeah. it. You know, um, occasionally Godzilla would turn up. On a, on a, I mean, I saw Godzilla movies on Saturday morning pictures as well, which is, mm-hmm. I don't know if you have that in the States where you had like a special, cinema would have a special show just for kids. Well, it was Saturday, Saturday morning. matinee, yeah. Well, Saturday Everybody morning, it was Saturday, Saturday morning thing where you'd get like a cartoon, a competition, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then usually some sort of a, a Br- we had a company over here called the the Children's Film Foundation, yeah, 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 which yeah, made movies for about like twenty eight years, and and so you get either one of their movies or. We get like a western or something, or if we're really lucky, 
depending on what prints were available, I imagine, would be something like a Godzilla movie. Mm. And, and, I'm, and I remember seeing things like, um, I remember seeing The Terror of Mechagodzilla, which is still to this day my favourite Godzilla it? movie. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and Titanosaurus in it as well. Okay. I think there's films on like, my dad's always one VHS first go. We dad rented the same films over and over. Yeah, 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 yeah. You what? You, you were going to copy them, and there was no one. No, no, didn't even no, rent yeah. heads. Or that, or. No, you rent stuff to death. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or you keep or it. You keep have it. to pay. Yeah, yeah. What gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh, they don't. They don't have my name on file, do they? Yeah. The <laughs> gold. Or what? You would just were there any movies that the gold? Were there any movies? Oh well, yeah, well, there was a movie. Yeah. But you you couldn't wait to see, and then when you saw it, you went. Oh, tons, tons of movies. I mean, the one, the one that always sticks out for me, for me, was the fact that, and after years of reading about it and reading in things like you know, Film Review magazine and then eventually in things like Starburst and Starlog, um, but the one I remember sitting down to watch it with my friends and thinking, yeah, great, this is going to be such a roller coaster ride. Blah blah blah. It's boring, isn't it? Rollerball. Actually, I like Rollerball. I always have. I haven't seen no, it for a long time, but as a kid. As oh, a, I've always as a liked teenager, it was I just found it really boring. Yeah, it wasn't really like the feature you would have expected. No, that's well, no, I, d- I think it's more to do with the, with the, with the, with the marketing of it. Yeah, but no, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but no, what we had at the time was we had female roller derby, so, and yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. that. So. But if you, but I'm saying if, if if I'd have known it was a serious serious sci-fi movie, blah 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 blah. I don't get me wrong. I should have known. I should have known because at the time that's what American sci-fi was like. Yeah, actually, it was really good. It was smart. It was intelligent. It was kind of sort of green sort of era, you know, that kind of it was no, like demon scene. Since, but then, but the way, but the way. I, I, way I perceived it with the poster and yeah. still, it was all balls to the wall kind of action and da 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 da. And James Kind was the name as well. Yeah, it was yeah, huge, yeah, huge, yeah. Huge. Yeah. Before he. But my dad always used to rent, always used to rent the gauntlets, always used to rent Kill the Elite, the Wild right. Bunch, anything that was just madly mm. man man. And the Quiet Man. Yeah, yeah. And the Quiet Man. I think he, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. he just played the Quiet Man. Quiet Man. I always used to throw me Quiet Man because that was the first American American movie I've ever seen where I heard the expression. Shut your gob! Shut your gob! Shut your gob! Just to prove that Irish were in the, in the American West. <laughs> yes, and, and yeah. Ireland never looks so great with the California hills in the background. But, you know, well, well, what are you going to do? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to have to end this, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, I mean, but no, that was good. We didn't do that much swimming. I think we did a lot of focus stuff and everything, so that was pretty cool. And it was good to come back and just kind of like jam. I thought that was really nice and everything. So, in going out, uh, where, where would you want to go out on there, Uh Well, you keep talking about reunion. I feel like I should be singing Freezer bird or something but uh oh oh sorry quotes wise we will go out uh well i started with an airplane one so i think uh i'll just end with the top secret one which is uh what what, what to, to, no that is de- <laughs> that is definitely not mel torme <laughs> go for it <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. On that theme, I'll say, um, say when? 6.30. All right, so... <laughs> I should have quoted the Dirty Dozen. John Cazabetti's greatest line in that movie is, 11! <laughs> if God had not wanted them sheared, he would not have made them sheared. <laughs>